Hi, this is Andy Turner, the Education Technologist at Illinois College. Today I wanted to show how to use Java in order to connect a SQL database to a Java uh, program and then output that to a text file. So here I have coding.com and I'm logging in through GitHub and GitHub is a good document repository solution which means you can collaborate with others based on a single code base that uh, each contains its own uh, unique ID for you as a user yet you can share and fork and branch off that code base to your own needs if you need to modify it. And then with those modifications oftentimes come improvements where other users can can also uh, get some new ideas from you and, and you can refine and iterate over the code base so that it's improved or revert back to one in case it's uh, not improved and you need to go back to the superior version in the past. But uh, here I'm using coding and uh, Nick's right for the most part it, it's uh, somewhat unreliable. However, um, it's working today and I'll show you basically what that will look like. Um, what I'm doing is in the last video I've showed how to create a database uh, in MySQL and I uh, am doing a SQL query if I log in here to MySQL and I'm logging into the database that I've created and I'll say use up and running which is what I showed last time and I'm going to select star from users and here we go. I have the ID and the username, the user ID, so that I can uh, basically create a shared uh, hacker space, so to speak. A hacker space is like a, uh, a group of people who are wanting to change something. Sound familiar? That's like a liberal arts community, right? So we can get together and change something. Now I'll go ahead and exit out of my SQL here. Now what I want to do is I want to persist this data out into a text file so that it can be available across different days. Now I have created a program and I'll open it up here in nano db test 4java ah, db demo 4.java to open that up with nano and nano is just a text editor in the command line here oh no no, no. nano db demo for java there we go okay now so what I've had to import here is uh, java.sql and everything in java.sql I've had to import the file, file, read, file reader, and file writer, an IO exception, and the print stream. And I'm calling this demo4. Now I've uh, imported this JDBC driver after installing it according to the instructions in the last uh, tutorial. What you can do is basically Google for install MySQL uh, JDBC driver Ubuntu and then that should take you right here as the first hit and then if you follow these instructions then you should be up and running and this source code is basically what I've modified for this purpose so I've, I'm throwing these exceptions in case something goes wrong so I'll know what what went wrong there is no handling of those exceptions so this is kind of literally a hack now I'm in the database that I've created. I've hacked into this database using not the real password. That's a joke. And then I've actually uh, created a new text file called hello6.txt. Now I'm not going to uh, show you source code with a real password but you can imagine how you can insert that. Now. I'm creating a new file object called local file and I'm writing hello6.txt 
with that. And then I'm using the create new file method on the local file. And then I'm instantiating a new file writer object called local file writer. And I'm taking that local file in. Now to set up the connection, I'm instantiating a connection object called C, and that's using the driver manager method get connection. And I'm using the connection that I've defined up here. This would be uh, modifiable according to your own MySQL URI. Now I'm having to uh, create a new statement and I'm assigning statement to the connection objects create statement method. Next I have a result set and that's an object instantiated from the result set class and that is being assigned to the statement objects execute query method and the query that I'm executing is what I just showed on the MySQL command line and I'm wrapping that in quotes. Now in order to process the query results I'm just outputting to the screen get the list of users in our class. Now for all of I and the number of columns in that result set I'm putting this for the sake of the system.out. I'm getting the column name which is an integer and that's an array of columns. Column name can be referred to from an index, an integer index. Now I'm writing a tab to the file so that they'll be nice and separated with tabs. The end result that we want is a tab delimited text and that's what we're going to have here because SQL databases accept tab delimited text files. When you do the import it's called a pipeline and you can run that as a procedure I do believe so, th so that you won't have to do all of this manually every time. Now the local file writer has a write method and I'm writing the metadata and I'm getting the column name from that so it's writing the metadata from that column name and then I'm breaking that with a new row with the system dot print dot print dot system dot out dot print line to the screen and then I'm writing a new line with the slash in to the file so this is output to the screen and this is output to the text file now while there's a, a new one in the result set I'm again that was these are the headers up here these are the tabs inside the text file and we're using I and I'm writing a new tab between each result set and I'm wrapping this result set objects get object method at the index I in quotes so what that basically will do is let me access uh, that data and hand it to the write method of the local file writer otherwise it would fail because it's expecting a string this is expecting a string and this expects to output an integer so that's a bit of a, a hack a bit of a workaround now I'm writing a new line after each row so now I have my columns and my rows and then I'm just closing the local file writer and then just a confirmation here and then I'm closing the connection now I will go ahead and run the old uh, version of this program I'm not going to compile it but you can see how you would uh, recompile and you could also see how you can create a an array of things up at the top here I'll go ahead and punch that in and the reason that you would want to create an array of things at the top to the SQL query is because you might have input a whole bunch of parameters. <coughs> Excuse me. To run your one query with. So I would want to know all of the 
different all of the different courses where the course ID is something for each student in each course. So this would be all so the course ID would be one parameter that I didn't put this that I didn't put into this array. And then the assessment ID would be another parameter that I would need to put into this query so that I could find all of the scores for each student where it's for each course. So all the students, all the assessments, all the courses. And then I would output that as one text file each day where new data would come in. So. Let's go ahead and run that. I will exit. I won't save. Java DB, DB Demo 4. Okay. Now, it output to the screen this result formatted with tabs, which is nice. And now I'll show that in this in the file system, hello five was created. Actually, it was it was hello six. That was a previous iteration. That that's not the output of that program. This is, and that's how you see the correctly formatted text file where you have the headers and even though it's sort of jagged this would still work just fine in Excel as a tab delimited text file and then you would import that into SQL so this source code DB demo 4 is out on the HTML internship Google Drive folder what I'd like to do is flesh that out where it would have the correct inputs select all from course IDs and that would show me all of the courses that contain uh, assessments so we'll look at that thanks a lot